Shalom, this is GMS on Let's Sit Downs coming back with a lesson. First off and foremost, I would like to give all praises, glory, and the highest honor to Yahweh, Hashem, 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 Kakadash, double honors to the other apostles of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to the elect out there that are spreading this word of society and truth all over the four corners of the earth. God, I just did a video about uh, justifying the wicked, you know, concerning the place that uh, me and the brothers were at. Uh, over here in Curacao, Caribbean island of the Dutch Antilles, okay, which is called Hofi Mango, okay. Um, while we was walking there, uh, the tour guide, he mentioned uh, a spiritual thing. He said, like, um, we, uh, we was walking and all of a sudden you enter something that is called the poisonous, poisonous garden or the poison garden. Okay, so when you walk through the poison garden, you have certain fruits hanging in the tree, but those fruits is poisonous. If you eat that shit, you're going uh, to get very, very sick, man. You're going to get very, very sick. Uh, there was this guy, he ate three of those, um, of those um, fruits, and he was in the hospital for three weeks. Okay. So when you walk through the poisonous garden, the poison garden, eventually you stumble upon the freedom wall, which this is the freedom wall, you know, that it's like a, uh, it's like a monument to represent the freedom of the slave plantation of Hofi Mango. Okay, so when you uh, walk into the freedom wall, and you go through the gate then you enter into the the mango garden okay now the spiritual thing that i want to uh, speak about that the tour guy mentioned like okay so when when we go through this gate i want you to leave to think about i want you to think about um, negative things and bad things and leave them behind in the poisonous garden and then you enter through the gate and uh, we enter into the, the fruitful area, you know, where healthy herbs and healthy plants grow. And he, you know, he wanted to make it this, um, this whole, um, you know, uh, attraction out of it. Like, uh, you know, that's the spiritual side of it. But the real spiritual side of it is that the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and his son's name that the world ignorantly calls Jesus, whose name is Yahweh Shai. In the, in the law, it mentions that you are not supposed to put seeds and plant seeds together. So the spiritual aspect of this whole thing is that the Heavenly Father, through His majesty and beauty, made it go like that, that when plants are planted close to each other, they separate themselves from each other. They don't mingle themselves. You understand? Now it's all pursuant to this scripture. Um, in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Chapter 22. Verse 9. Let me highlight it real quick. Okay. It says. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown. And the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. You see that? Now let's look up this first in the NLT. It says in the NLT, you must not plant any other crop between the rows of your vineyard. If you do, you are forbidden to use either the grapes from the vineyard or the other crop. You see that? Um, very bad translation. <laughs> Because it says, if you, it says don't do it, but if you still do it, then you are not allowed to use it. That's, that's a whole lot of crap right there. Man. You see that? So sometimes you have to understand that going into other translations, it doesn't make it right, man. So it says, let me read the King James Version again. Deuteronomy 22 verse 9. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. You know, it's not gonna go well with the fruit of your vineyard, man. 
Now, in Holland, let me just mention Holland because that's where I know that that shit happens 100%. What they do is, what they do is they mix seeds. They mix seeds. Okay. Um, what that be? They make seeds. They create all these kinds of all kinds of um, GMO plants. Of course, GMO gene splicing and stuff like that. That's all wrong. But what you see in this garden, which actually they call it the garden, but it's actually a, an old slave plantation. Okay, in my previous video, I uh, explained about you know how this tour guide, this Jake tour guide, he was kind of justifying the behavior and the acts of. What the so-called white man done did on this slave plantation man yes they turn it in, into a beautiful thing and uh it it see it feels peaceful but the land is not cleansed man it doesn't matter how many uh, uh you know um how many aloe vera plants you you uh you will put there and how many um mangoes are on the tree it's it's still a place where blood has been shed and it can only be cleansed by shedding the blood of him that shed it, okay? Which is the descendants of the slave master that was there and the other um, Edomites. Anyway, the point of this lesson is that nature itself keeps the balance. You have the poison garden and you have the fruitful garden. The fruitful garden containing the mango trees. And they have the poison garden, okay? which contains the trees that give off even when the rain falls man when the rain falls and the drops of the rain or the the water of the rain falls on your skin you get you, you can get blisters man okay because of the the leaves of the of the trees they even give off a certain poison okay but nature itself keeps those things separate okay so the guy he mentioned like the spiritual aspect he said you leave, you leave your uh, bad behavior in the poison garden and you meditate upon the good behavior in the, in, the, in the fruitful garden. But really, what you should meditate upon is the fact that you shouldn't mix seeds together, man. You shouldn't gene splice, you shouldn't try to create all kinds of new fruits and new things upon the earth, man. Because according to the law of the Most High, that's not what's supposed to happen, okay? You're supposed to keep these seeds separate. Let me read it again, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 9. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with thy first seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. You see? Um, let me show you. Um, I want to show you the part... Maybe you can see it here in the map. Um, okay, here it says nine. Nine, it says uh, cura di venemo, which it says poisonous garden. So that's nine. And then 10 is Muraya di Libertad, which is the freedom wall, okay? So you walk from eight, you'd walk to nine, and you walk through this venomous garden. Now, this, you see the light green, you see the light green area over here. I don't know if I can use a pencil or something. Let me see. No, I can't use a pencil. Um... You see the light green area over here in between. So you have the path, then you have the trees in the top area, these trees, and then you have these trees in the lower area. Okay, which you see that the path is not really the thing that separates it. It's nature itself that separates these trees from each other. Okay, so it says, Ten Muraya di Libertad, which means uh, wall of freedom. And then you see Mondi di Mango, okay, which is the so-called um, fruitful forest or the mango forest. So you see, you can see how nature itself separates these things from each other, 
Okay, so the lesson to be learned out of this, um, you know, tour for, for Esau, for Jake, whatever, is to, is to see what nature itself does, man. They don't mix together. They don't grow amongst each other. They keep themselves separate so that in nature it doesn't get defiled. Poisonous fruit doesn't mix with, with um, mango, with, um, with a sweet fruit. Because otherwise, if that would happen, if you were trying to mix these things together, you don't know what the hell you're going to eat. You might have that, the, 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 the genes from the, from the poisonous fruit inside of the mango. Now the mango is poisonous. You see that? But regardless that nature shows you these things, they be doing it, man. Let me show you something. Black uh, roses. This is the shit that they be making, man. This is the stuff that they be making. This is not natural, man. Okay? And they do it a lot in Europe with the tulips. Um, purple. You see? They do it with these flowers. They mix. They gene splice. They constantly do it with tulips. Okay. So yeah, man. Real quick video, man. That's that's all I gotta say concerning it. Um, nature will restore itself, man. Even though you know so-called mankind uh, disrupts it, you just need to give it some time, some some time in one um, uh, a particular area for it to rebuild itself the right way, man. Even during the Corona time, what you saw was, uh, you know, because there was not a lot of people in the streets. You had the curfew. You had the, um, you could, you had to stay indoors and stuff like that. You saw animals coming back into the into the cities, man. <laughs> you know, animals came back into the cities because, you know, the places that Esau don't chop down the forest and stuff like that. Those used to be houses of of um, of animals, man. Okay. Now another funny thing is that you know here you, here you have these white ants. You have these white ants that live in certain trees. Okay, which you know if you got them white ants in your house it's very uh, very annoying, very irritating. They eat old wood. But what they do is on the same location that they want to build their house, there used to be these trees wherein these uh, ants are. Now you chop them down on the location where you want to build your house. The ants are in the ground still eating of the wood. You build your house and then you start complaining about how you got uh, all the, uh, this ant problem. <laughs> My man, you the one that you know decided to take over that area instead of just being in the you know places where you're supposed to build. You understand? Now, Isa wants to have the fattest places upon the island, of course, as usual. Um, so he gonna have to deal with the with the consequences of that, man. Just like when, when, um, what was it? Um, the Kushites, they took um, they took the land of Israel. They took Samaria. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's. I think it's uh, in Kings, uh, First Kings. I think First Kings seventeen or something, or maybe Second Kings seventeen. No, I think Second Kings seventeen. Let me pull it up real quick to end the lesson with. Yeah, here it says this Second uh, Kings seventeen, verse twenty four. Starting off with verse 24, and the title is Cities of Israel Filled with Strangers. Okay, verse 24, and the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, from Kuta, and from Ava, and from Hamat, and from Saparavim, Saparvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling that they feared not Yahweh. Therefore Yahweh sent lions among them, which slew some. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou 
as removed and placed in the cities of Samaria, know not the manner of the of the most high of the land. Therefore he had sent lions among them, and behold they slay them, because they know not the manner of the most high of the land, of the power of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry hither, carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let them teach them the manner of the power of the land. So that's why you show, that's why you see that a lot of these um, Ethiopians, they call themselves Jews, okay? Because back in those days, they, they have been taught the laws of the land, okay? Not by not by a covenant, not by uh, 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 the appointment of the heavenly father, but just by the king of Assyria that said, hey, y'all need to know the laws of the land in order to live in that land, in, uh, in order for the land not to swallow your ass up, okay? Like it says in the book of Leviticus, if you don't keep the ways, the land will swallow you up, okay? Now the same goes for him, man. The same goes for these islands that Esau done took. Man, it, it's gonna swallow your ass up, man. You're gonna, you're gonna meet the creatures that used to live there if it's not, if if it not originally belongs to you, man. Okay, back in the days when we was in Israel and we was living correctly and righteously, we had no problems with the animals. You see, that's why in this uh, instance, the the Levite had to come and had to uh, uh, explain how to uh, keep the ways and the and the laws. You know, in order not to be swallowed up, man. Let me grab that in Lamentation, uh, Leviticus, I mean. Okay. I think verse 27. Mm, or is it, eight, is it 18, maybe? Um, let me see. Think what the, how, how does the scripture go again? I know it mentions Egypt also. You know, sometimes it's the it's the basic scriptures that you oftentimes forget, man. Let me see. Yes, chapter 18. Yeah, this is it. You see, I said 27, but 25. Okay, it says um, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 24. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Okay, so the people that were cast out of the land of Israel, they did uh, defile themselves. They did all kinds of, of uh, abominable things. So the Heavenly Father cast them out and put us in the land. Verse 25, and the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity there upon, there upon it and the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. So the heavenly father allows this to happen. Creatures come in. Okay, beasts come in. Insects. You know, and they give you a terrible time, man. <laughs> they give you a terrible ass time, man. You know? So yeah, man, if you don't keep the ways, man, eventually the land is going to show you what's up. So concerning this Deuteronomy... First over here, concerning the seeds, Deuteronomy 22 and 9, thou shalt 
not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. You don't know what the hell you are eating if you are planting poisonous with, with, uh, with sweet. You understand? Even uh, in Holland, they have uh, something that they take the genes of herring, okay, um, and they put it inside of tomatoes. So uh, sometimes you eat a tomato and you'd be like, hey, it tastes like fish. Because the tomatoes cannot grow in Holland because um, of the cold. So then they add this gene, this fish gene, which they added onto the tomato so that it um, can withstand the cold. And then sometimes when you eat it, you taste fish. You see, so that's a very unnatural thing, man. You know, the scriptures call, um, the scriptures call um, Europe the bottomless pit. Why? Because not, nothing really grows over there, man. <laughs> you know, so Esau does all kinds of things to be able to grow uh, fruit in Europe. You know, which the things that he be doing, man, that ain't right. So, you know, judgment also will be passed for that, man. Seeing he wanted to lay his hands on the book of the Lord, uh, on the book of the law, Lord and law. You know, I wanted to say both things at the same time. Anyway, with that, I want to give all praises, glory and the highest honor to Yahweh, Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Rakakadash, Shalom to the elect.